Hello guys, in this video we are going to create some glitch art in Glitch Machine using images of skulls. So I'm going to show you two adjustments you can add so we can save a copy of Glitch Machine and basically use it as a glitchy skull generator or whatever image you want to put in. If you're new to Glitch Machine or haven't heard me talk about this before, Glitch Machine is a glitch art template I regularly update with new glitch effects and assets completely for free. I will link it in the description if you want to know more just so I can move on from that. But if you want to follow along, I've downloaded a ton of skull images from Unsplash. I will try to link all of them in the description but you just go to Unsplash here and just type in skull. A lot of these images will work fine. The reason I'm using a skull is because obviously like they're white so a lot of the time there is an obvious foreground and an obvious background. There are obviously on skulls going to be shadows here where the eyes are, obviously shadows where the teeth is, um, whereas on faces and other types of photography like the lighting is different. You'll rarely find an image of a skull where the lighting is highlighting the eye sockets but not the forehead for example. So most images of skulls will work fine. I'm loading into the May version of Glitch Machine here but this will work with future versions of Glitch Machine so if you're watching this in the future you can use any version that was put out after the May version. So this is what you'll see when you load in a fresh copy of Glitch Machine. What I'm going to do is just disable every single layer other than your artwork here just so you can see like how this comes together from scratch. If I click into the your artwork here tab and just disable anything in there now I'm just going to pull in my skull images. So I've got seven skulls that I'm going to put in. So I'll import those and then just one by one I'm just going to reposition each of them to be sort of posed where I want them to be. You go to window and just make sure you've got properties ticked. You'll get this little panel here. I've got it at the top right but it might appear elsewhere for you and as you're selecting the layers you can just adjust these position values and the scale value as well to um, to put the skull where you want it to be. So as you position each one just go and hide the ones that you're done positioning. You don't have to position them the exact same as me. All this will remain editable after we're done so don't worry about it too much. And the good thing is obviously because of the like nature of the effects that we're going to be using here where normally you maybe wouldn't zoom in this much on an image because it looks low quality. Images like glitch artwork and stuff can be low quality like it's sometimes deliberately low quality so don't worry too much if you go super zoomed in and things start to look a little bit pixelated. So I'm just going to skip, I'll skip in the edit to the point where I've reached all the skulls being edited to fit the frame I mean. Okay so all of those are done so I'm going to pull up the timeline now and let me just delete these demo files that are in here and then I'm just going to reduce all these layers to be, it doesn't matter how long, so I'm going to put them around the second mark, one second. Okay, it doesn't matter how long you, you make them but once you've done that just right click them with all of them selected. So make sure you've clicked on the bottom, hold shift, click on the top one, right click any of them and go to keyframe assistant. Now it's probably just cropped slightly out of the recording here. Uh, let me try it again. So yeah, if I, I'm recording on, I'm recording on an ultra wide, so there's space below where the window ends. But um, yeah, if I just pull the layers up, you can see here it says sequence layers. You'll get this little menu, just press okay and it will just sequence them out. So if you turn all the other layers back on now, every one second or so the skull just changes. Now we don't really need that animation, um, we're just doing it this way because the way I'm going to do this is just through still images. So I'll just be exporting a still image from each second of the animation when we've done. So next, in still in the your artwork here tab, right click and go to new adjustment layer and if you go to window and just make sure you have got effect controls ticked and effects and presets ticked. In the effects and presets just type in threshold and just drag in the regular CC threshold onto your adjustment layer and then come down to the timeline and change the adjustment layers blend mode to darken. All this is doing basically if you have a look at it when it's on normal threshold is like a one bit dither so it just turns every value to black and white depending on the threshold you set. The threshold you're setting is how light something has to be before it is pure white. So if we go to zero, then all pixels are pure white. But if you go even above zero a little bit, then you know it starts to pull in some of the blacks. So that means when we change the blend mode to darken, you can basically flatten out the shadows of any image to be pure black using the blend mode and the threshold adjustment, basically. The reason that helps us here is because we won't have to spend any time masking out details that we don't want to be showing in our like final product of the glitch effect. 
obviously like you've got things like chromatic aberration and in you know places like this eye socket here you don't necessarily want like any red and blue pixels to be showing up in here but because we're adding a glitch effect they might end up there so by using the threshold it just ensures that i turn it back on now these shapes here for the eye socket are defined this sort of nose cartilage bit is defined the teeth are defined because the black areas will have very little to glitch in them if that makes sense so if we skip through now and just have a look at the other ones you'll see like this one's maybe a bit dark that that one's fine the rest of them look okay so for this one here that's my sixth layer you can just go in and add a levels adjustment and just pull the input white value toward the middle a little bit and you can move the gamma as well if you want to do that but yeah that adjustment will make that one fine and i'm happy with the rest of them as well so if we start from this one which is the first one and come back into glitch machine um i've said said this a lot in the recent glitch machine videos but what's hard for me is showing you the effects controls and the output so if you're following along obviously you'll see the output on your end but when i'm going through and talking about these layers you obviously only get this tiny little preview um so for the tutorial i will prioritize showing you the effects controls just because that's what you actually need to look at on your end so first thing i'm going to enable is the editable chromatic aberration at first sight it won't really do much but if you zoom in really close you'll see now there's chromatic aber aberration on like the finer details of the pixels um, if you want to edit that so if i double click on here the sliders for each channel so if i move the x-axis for the blue channel a little bit over come back in after doing that to the glitch machine comp you'll see the chromatic aberration has changed so you don't have to do that um, but those controls are there if you need them they don't really they're not really all that necessary for this effect that i'm creating today but if you want to customize them um just do that in the editable chromatic aberration tab but the next effect that i'm going to enable is the pre-glitch adjustment you can edit the levels here if you want but we're mainly just turning this on for the unsharp mask settings that i've got there so don't worry too much about that i'm going to turn on the subtle screen flicker and i'm going to turn on the alternative pixel slash downscale effect doesn't matter which pixel downscale effect you go for if you're on mac you're going to have to use the 32-bit one but if you've got windows you can choose either of the 16-bit ones then I'm going to apply the CRT screen texture. So at this point, this is how it looks. You can see it's looking a little bit CRT effecty already. If you double click on the CRT screen texture, I'm using the RGB indexed CRT lines 01. You can change the texture if you want, or you can flip horizontal. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use the index lines 01 for mine. I'm then going to apply the contrast adjustment, the glow, and these next three blue ones, which are sharp and glow glitch grain and the light channel glow so i'll just wait for those to render and you can see the glitch effects coming together already but obviously there's still more to add here and everything i've just mentioned you can go in and customize but for this video just to keep it simple i'm just going to go with the recipe that i kind of know works i'm going to enable the scanline blend just because i like that texture and then distortion displacement so this is the first one i'm going to mess with i just wait for it to render if i just hide my timeline and come down here and go to fit up to 100 it'll give me a better view but all i'm going to do is just turn up the max horizontal displacement to so i'll go 604 which might be a bit much for some people i'm going to try it a little bit higher i might end up going lower but if we go at 805 like it starts getting really distorted so i'm going to leave mine at that for now some of the effects that we're going to apply after this will mask a little bit of that as well while you're working you might notice like mine just is if i move the, the timeline again you'll see this changes so after effects is using something called interpolation to approximate or guess basically what this would look like when rendered but because you're changing the size every time it's got to like re-approximate it every time so if you want to know how it actually is going to look just go as close to like full as you can and then just change this to fit up to 100 and it'll be generally pretty accurate unless you're on a very small screen but if you pull up the layers like i just did and it starts to look weird don't worry about that that's normal so i'm then going to apply the glitch displacement i'm going to put the light leaks on and then i'm going to reapply the crt screen overlay again so just turn that one on you can put image bloom on if you want it's up to you sometimes it looks a little bit weird but i'll try image bloom so image bloom is mostly coming in on the left for me still got loads of interpolation in this preview here but like if you zoom in you'll see that it's not i don't know if it comes up on the recording but there's like these rainbowy lines almost on my screen and i think it will come through on the recording but yeah like i said if you just zoom they disappear 
disappear because they're not actually there. So I'm going to add the light sweep and that's all I'm going to add from the list here. I'm going to go and mess with a few things as well though. So the first thing I'm going to mess with is the glow. So if you come to number seven, just make sure you've got that glow enabled that is underneath the image bloom and then maximize your composition preview. And then from here, depending on your image, you can either lower the glow threshold or you can turn it all the way up. I wouldn't go any higher than like 95, 96, but again, I spoke about threshold before. Glow threshold is literally just how bright does a pixel have to be for it to glow. So by setting it really high, you can up the intensity of the glow without it sort of washing out your image. So if I go to 92 and then change the glow intensity, you'll see it's not really glowing much for these like red, green and blue dots, but it's mostly glowing on the white sections. Now, for me, the white is like a little bit too intense. Um, there's whole sections here that appear to be just white. Obviously, when we zoom in, if you zoom in, you'll see the textures coming through. But to make them a little bit more interesting, if I just pull this timeline back up, I'm going to enable the complex noise. And then in the pixel downscale effect, I'm just going to change these two numbers for horizontal and vertical to 256. And if you want, you can put the simple noise on as well. So if I render this preview now, because I've got a skull every one ish second here, the effect I've built here, all I need to do is go to composition, save frame as file. It'll load up somewhere for you to save it as. I'm not going to render them out in this video because I'm getting error messages in my screen recording because I'm rendering and recording at the same time. But what you can basically do now is if I skip to two seconds in, obviously we've got the interpolated weird like yellowness to this one. Three seconds if I skip in, we've got another skull and there's a skull every second now until we're done. So you can just go and render out one frame from each second using composition, save frame as, to get all your artwork out of the one effect. Now, the only thing I'm probably gonna change in mind before I export these is, I'm just gonna turn off the image bloom and I'm gonna turn off the light channel glow as well. If you do that as well, you might have to go back and re-mess with the glow threshold like we did before. So I turned mine up, so I'm gonna have to turn it down a little bit now that, I, now that I've changed those two properties. But yeah, I'm happy with this level of like glitchiness. When, you, when you're dealing with this type of effect, there's always gonna be like a, in my head, I like, it's like a glitchiness to glowiness ratio. The more glow you have, you're going to sort of wash out some of these little dithery chromatic aberration like glitch effects and textures. But the less glow you have, um, the less interesting it looks to me. You don't have to have any glow if you don't want to have the glow. But once you've got the effect where you want it, you can just quickly skip through. Yours will probably render a little bit quicker than mine because I'm recording a video. Whenever I record the videos, they always go really slow and just export a frame every time. I will, after this recording, export my frames. So I'm just editing this now at the end. And the only thing I forgot to mention was you can go back into the Your Artwork Here tab and where the threshold is you can turn up or down the blend with original or just use the opacity slider and if you start to include a little bit of the detail that was being blended out then you can had it like 24 before i think but you can in the final output get some details like just on the outskirts of the white sections that are nice and colorful look really cool so yeah i'll just throw this bit on the end um, I forgot to mention this. So yeah, if you look here where the eye socket is and we go back into here, you'll see that you'll see what's coming through basically. Um, and all you got to do for that is use the blend with original slider and set it to your liking. But yeah, I'll just put this in at the end. That's it. If you've got Glitch Machine and you made something yourself with skulls or whatever using this, thank you for the support. Send me what you made, tag me on social media. But yeah, I hope this helped. Again, thanks for all support, anyone who did get Glitch Machine. If for whatever reason you watched to the end of the video and you don't have Glitch Machine, I'll show the recommended videos at the end, some more Glitch Machine content if you're not sure whether you want to get in on it or not. The next update for Glitch Machine is coming on November 1st and it's going to be the last update. So if you have Glitch Machine before then, I will email you the final update for free. Also. At the time I'm recording this, we're like approaching 10,000 on the channel. And for the 10,000 video, I'm going to do a Q&A. So I will leave a link to a place you can submit a question if you want to ask a question in that video. But other than that, thanks for the support. I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next video.